Hello and welcome to part 2 of this chart making tutorial and in this part we're looking at how to use PHP to create the graph dynamically. If you haven't seen part 1, this would be a good time to see it and come back here. So let's begin with our PHP tags, opening and closing tags like that. And then down here we're going to have our S. Okay, let me save this before I go any further. Let me save this as index2.php since we already have index and let me put my SVG tags. So the SVG will display the data from PHP. So let's add uh, some styles here to the SVG. First of all, the background color. Let me add this as a black. Can be any color. The width, uh, let's give it a 50%. That's about it. And then let's create a view box right here. And then this view box will be equal to, let's add 0 space 0, 500 for the width of the image and 200 for the height. But in the interest of being dynamic, we could simply uh, create what is called max width. Let's create a variable and say 500 and max height and give it a value of 200 like that. All right, that way we can simply echo them here. Uh, by doing that, PHP, echo, uh, max width, and then space, we echo max height, like so. Let me put that there, something like that. Uh, we might need to concatenate here a space and concatenate again, something like that. You don't need to do this part, you can leave the numbers there, but just for the sake of dynamic, so that once I change this number, it also changes here. That way I don't have to change in multiple places at once. So let's see what we got so far, and this is what we have. Doesn't look like it's uh, max width and max height. Let's see here, echo max width. Let me go to the... Uh, page source to see okay so that's where the problem is there's no space between these two so to make sure there's a space I, have to add, I should have put a space there refresh and we're in business okay so let me change the color here to something more uh, something much better which I think is much better so let me copy that you can put any color here that's up entirely up to you all right so it, Let's create the data now that we need from PHP. Let's create an array. Say array. Uh, this is an associative array. So we have January there with a value of 10. These are values from, uh, uh, let's say, maybe the database or something. So let me copy these. Maybe five of them. Let me do uh, Feb, Mar, and let's see what comes next. April. And then we have May. So let's also uh, randomize the values here. I'm going to put a 90, uh, put 30, and let's try a 50 somewhere here. All right, so these look like random values. So we need these on the chart, the months over here, and the data on the top. Okay, so now to start with, we need to create those lines, the lines that go up and down, left and right, and we need to divide those by the amount of data we have. And we've got five point data points, so we need to know how many there are in here. And so, to know the relative gap in the y-axis, let's just name it y-gap uh, for simplicity, is equal to, we have the max, um, let's say the max width, we divide that by count. Now count will count how many items are in an array, so count of array like so. Actually, sorry, this is the X gap. The Y gap is the height. Same thing, we're just going to do the same thing here. And now we can go down here and use our PH, open some PHP tags here and echo out some lines. Now we have to loop through because we know that the number of lines we want are exactly the number of items. So let's loop through this, go through this loop. Let's create a for each and say array, key, and value. And while we go through there, we echo a polyline. 
so let's say polyline something like so and oh sorry this is a self-closing tag as we saw in part one now a polyline as usual requires uh, two points okay so let's create uh, first of all let's create a style for this in the styles we need the stroke color uh, to be white okay uh, what else do we need uh, i think for now that that is all we need and then we need points here we need minimum of two points for us to see a line so now looking at this uh, graph we know that the lines are coming from top to bottom so always the top which is the x is going to be zero okay the x is going to be zero and down here the y is going to be maximum at the, on the second point so the first point the x will be zero on the second point the y will be maximum so we know oh sorry the the y the x is not zero the x the x is progressive but the y is zero and here the y is maximum sorry about confusing those so what we do is we create the first point x y so the x is some value a progressive value so in order to get that value let's create a a number here let's say num is equal to uh, we know this is the x gap right so we want the first uh, to be equal to the, that gap that we've given here so the first x will be equal to that so num is equal to that then once we pass here we increment num num plus equals so we're incrementing it by uh, the value of x gap okay so that we progressively go to the right hand side through every uh while we run through the loop all right so let's get this x gap here that will be the x value so let's put it there let's put a comma and now we need the y value which we know is going to be zero throughout so that's point number one so let's go to the second point of this one line this is only one line we are dealing with here but because it's going to loop through it will create all the number of lines that we want so the second one we know that the y is going to be maximum so let's add the max uh, height there as the second value but the first value here is uh, the x gap again so let's do x gap comma maximum something like this so if i run this here you're going to see a line there but i'm supposed to see more than this so what's going on here uh, it seems that everything was pinned on that same place okay so uh, the problem is i'm getting the value of uh, x gap which is uh, a finite value a definite value i'm supposed to get the value of num because num is changing throughout here so let me put num here instead replace x gap with num and there num as well so this should work now all right so we have five segments here uh, which is exactly what we wanted but the color we don't want it to be so obvious i want it to be a bit transparent so what i'm going to do is create uh, rgba open bracket let me say zero oh let's say well, instead of rgba let's use uh hash and say ff 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 this is white but if we add two more values that becomes the alpha so we add two two at the end so now they're a bit more transparent hopefully you can still see them all right so those are the lines on the other side but also let's create lines from left to right so using the same polyline here the only difference is we need a num number two which will keep track of the y-axis so here let's duplicate that and say num two is equal to y gap something like that and let me increment num two as well down here with uh, y gap now here the thing also is because these these lines the second lines will be going left to right so meaning the y will be changing but the x will um, the x will stay the same on both sides so let's see what what, what we're doing here so the first one uh, we know that uh, so we just need to swap these actually so let me remove that zero comma num and then here uh, let me remove that comma and say max height comma num so let me refresh that 
Okay, so we've gone, we have a line here that goes up to there, which is not exactly what we want. And that's because we're using max height instead of max width, like so. So let me try that again. And we have a line going all the way that side. However, it seems all the lines are in one place once more. So what have we done wrong? We're supposed to use num2. Okay, so let's change that to num2 and refresh and there we go we have the lines that we want so so far so good now what we need to create the next thing is to create the uh, the points of data okay so in order to do that we can still use the same uh, loop through let's simply echo out something else let's echo some circle so let's change this polyline to circle like that okay now the circle uh, requires uh, different parameters for example the radius is equal to 5 something like that and I want the stroke of this one to be gray uh, let's see. all right let me let's make it white and then let's add a few of gray okay and then we need the center X and the center Y uh, like that so these are the values that we need to determine now every time we go through the loop okay if i refresh right now i'll see a circle here but all of them are being put there so we know for example that the uh, going this way left to right these are stepped they they are here right here where these uh, lines are so the x is incremental so we're just going to follow what num which is the x gap is doing so the x is num like so okay if we refresh we're going to see the points at the top there throughout as predicted now what we need is to use the values that we have to put them on the appropriate level down here now in order to do this we have to look at the values here the data now in order to know how much uh, what resolution we're going to have in the y-axis here for the data let's look at the maximum value from here so let's let's create a variable here called max uh, value or max data just I don't know that sounds much better let's use max um, max array something like that so what this would do is get the maximum value from all these numbers so which is 90 in this case now just to be safe so that the the point doesn't go above like that Let's make the maximum value bigger by let's add let's add something like oh, yeah, 10 maybe something max data let's add 10 we may increase this later on uh, all right so this is the maximum value in the data that would be the highest we can go all right so in order to know how much a relative gap uh, is or what the value of one pixel is supposed to be we need to find what one unit is so let's create a value a um, let's call it one unit a variable called one unit so one unit will be equal to the max height now let's divide the max height by the max data okay max data like so so this will give us what one unit is worth okay in this case so let me copy that one unit because I'll need it to multiply to create the the value of y. So let's go down to this and say if the value of y is equal to because remember we are only missing the value of y. We have our x's done, so we need y. So y is equal to the value, this current value that we have here as we go through the array, this value, which is this data. Remember the key is this one. So now we want to get this value and multiply it by one unit so that we know exactly what the value should be. So let me get this y here and put it on the, uh, it's not supposed to be xy, it's supposed to be cy, sorry. Let me put the y value there and let's see if that actually works. Okay, so you can see the values are going like that, like that, like that, like that. Now, there's something uh, going on here. As you can see, this one at the very end is cut because we are dividing by the exact number of points. So in order to avoid this, let's add one, let's pretend there's one extra 
here. So we should always add one extra point so that the very last one doesn't go to the end. So in order to do that, let's add plus one here. But let's put this in brackets to make sure that it's evaluated first. So let me copy that to the second part as well. Something like so. And then when I refresh, at least the point is not at the very end. And you see at here at the top, this is not at the very top because of that 10 we added here. Which one? That's that there. If I remove this 10, for example, which is max data, and right, uh, this goes down, uh, we have these issues of edges. So let me, actually, this, that didn't go as further. Oh, all right, there, there it is. It goes like that. Now, one thing I've noticed is I was expecting this uh, 10 to increase the value here at the top, but it's increasing at the bottom because what I've realized is the data is actually inverted. Let me show you what I mean. You see this one, the first value here is at the top, but if we look at our data, it's actually a 10. 90, which is the second one, is the one that's biggest. So this is 10 and this is 90. So the graph is actually inverted. So we have to invert this Y value the other way around. So so that uh, the, the 90 is at the top and the 10 is at the bottom. So in order to do that, we have to invert our Y. So this is the value of Y, but let's subtract this from the total height of the whole uh, thing. So we're going to say max height, let's go to max height minus whatever this value is so that everything becomes inverted. And there we go. So we have a 10, we have a 90, we have uh, whatever these values are. So if you want to increase the gap at the top here, this is where you go back and increase this number. So let's add this 50 for max data. We pretend that instead of 90, the maximum number we have here is that plus 50, which will leave more gap at the top. So let me refresh and you see that's what's going on. So let's leave it at 50 for now. Okay, so the next thing is to create our poly lines. Let's create lines that join these dots together. So that is also a polyline. So let's add one more polyline here. So I could simply duplicate this and bring it down here. Something like so. So every time we go through this, we add a, a line. Every time we go through, the loop, we add a line from here to there, go through the loop, another line, another line, another line, until they all connect. So this line we know, uh, let's create a, a variable here called points, for example. Points is equal to, let's assign it to an empty string. So what I'm going to do here is assign points a value. Just before I add this, I'll say points is equal to, this is the point at which we are supposed to start our line. So it's supposed to start at whatever value is y, for example. So let's add, we know y is present, but what do we use for x? x is exactly where the circle is and x, actually these are the values right here, num and y, because uh, we want the lines to start and end wherever the circles are. So let's get num and put it here. Remember to leave some spaces here at the beginning and the end. Let's put a comma. So these are the coordinates for this num and y. These are the starting coordinates. Actually don't need to put them in. Oh, oh yeah, I may need to put them here. Okay, let me leave them there for now. So points is equal to, instead of having these points here, I'm just going to use that variable called points. So these points will end up there. Okay, that's the starting line. And now after the uh, this first part is created, we store points again. Let me put a semicolon at the end. So let's store what points has right now before we... Oh, what have I done? I didn't copy everything, something like that. All right, so points... Uh... All right, what's going on? Points here, zero, zero. There is points and we need the second one. All right, let me, I don't think I'm going to see anything so far. Okay, because we only have one point. Now we need a way to create the second point. 